Well, let's speak now to Johnny Walsh, who's a senior analyst on Afghanistan uh, from the United States Institute of Peace. Uh, Mr. Walsh, yesterday, the Taliban strike. Today, the ISIL strike. It's a, it's a difficult challenge dealing with the security situation in Afghanistan right now. Uh, that's absolutely right. And I think some of the especially horrible uh, events of the last recent days, Ghazni in particular, show how important efforts at a peace process really are. Because while these incidents are capable of causing enormous human suffering, they don't fundamentally move the needle in the conflict, which has been essentially stalemated for a long time. And we're at a situation where no side is really capable of winning anytime soon, which is why some kind of political dialogue to de-escalate this war, ultimately ending in a peace process, is so important. Tell us uh, about the challenges that these, these two foes present. I mean, the Taliban is clearly the more challenging situation, but with ISIL there as well, uh, well, it's a formidable problem. Yeah, so the Taliban is a vastly larger group in Afghanistan. It's one of the largest insurgencies in the world. It might be the largest, uh, depending what their exact numbers are. And that's the group that's really fighting to retake the Afghan state that they controlled in the 1990s, up until just after September 11th. Uh, that's the bad news. On the positive side, compared to ISIL, they are much more uh, pragmatic, and there is a much larger strain within the Taliban that might be interested in peace. ISIL is as extreme as they come. It's a much smaller group clustered in a few areas of Afghanistan. It poses no threat to actually take over the country that really any observer can see, but it can cause enormous damage, and it's willing to cross lines of brutality, like sheer uh, violence against civilians, that generally the Taliban and certainly the U.S. and Afghan governments are unwilling to cross. And is there any crossover between the two? Is there any, any cooperation? In, in the largest sense, they actually fight each other all the time, and in fact, just a week or two ago, there was a mass surrender of one of ISIL's main chapters in Afghanistan because the Taliban had pinned them in. And so the ISIL chapter surrendered to the Afghan government as the uh, less dangerous rival to turn themselves into. Occasionally, we see signs of cooperation. Earlier this year, for example, they each launched a bombing in different parts of Kabul at virtually the same moment, which led to a lot of questions about whether they were colluding. In the big picture, they're actually quite bitter rivals. All right, Johnny Walsh, we'll leave it there. Appreciate your perspective on this. Johnny Walsh from the United States Institute of Peace.